I'm James Ernest, and today we're playing Burnout. Burnout is a two-player, sort of a change-making game for the Pairs deck. It's pretty complicated in terms of layout, where all the cards go, but it's pretty simple in terms of what you're doing. You're trying to buy cards in the middle by spending cards from your hand, and you're trying to make the most profit on those cards. The thing is that your starting hand essentially gets counted against you in the final scoring, and so you're just trying to make more of an improvement on your starting hand than your opponent does. And we track that with uh, discards here and there and, uh, and adding up scores as we go. The pairs deck is just the numbers one through 10 with uh, each one in a different quantity. There's one one, there's two twos, there's three threes, all the way up to 10 tens. And the deck we're playing with today is Andrew Kolb's Las Vegas deck, uh, which you can get from us on drive Through Carts. Burnout gets its name from what happens at the very end, which is when only one player has cards left, their hand just burns out, gets thrown away, and replaced with a random cards from the deck. You'd rather not do that. You'd rather get value for your cards instead of just random cards. Uh, but sometimes what you have left is tiny and random cards are better. There's a lot of different locations in this game. It's pretty strictly set up just for two players. I'm going to deal a hand. We'll talk about all of the where the cards go and what they do and, and uh, as, we, as we start. So starting is pretty simple. I just shuffle the deck and give eight cards to each player. On the first round of the game, we're gonna play simultaneously, and then the winner of that trick will play first on the next round and so on until we play out our hands. The first trick is just one card from the deck. We each play one card from our hands. In this case, you have to play exactly one card. You can't pass, You've gotta play something. So I'll pick this and you will pick, you have all the high cards. You have so many high cards. You're going to play the lowest card you can to pick up this too, because you have to play something. It's like we're at a market. This was actually originally called Fish Market, and we're buying fish at the market. Um, very little of that theme is preserved in the final game, but we are really buying the card in the center. And the card that we play is kind of an offer to buy that card. So it's only a two on offer, but you've offered to pay seven, and I've offered to pay four, so you get it. This goes in your score pile. Those are your cards, two is your points. The seven that you played goes into your discard pile, that's here. The four that I played didn't buy anything and so it doesn't get discarded. It goes into a place called my reserve pile, which is over here. The reserves are gonna go back into my hand, but only after I've played the rest of my hand out. So again, your discarded seven is gone now, although it will count against you at the end. My reserve four is waiting for me to run out of cards and then it's gonna jump back into my hand. From this point forward, we do play similar tricks, but we play cards in turn, and it looks like this. So again, we start a round by dealing a card into the target space. That's a six. The winner of the previous round, the winner of the previous trick, is going to play first. That's a disadvantage. I get to react to what you do. So you're going to pick any number of cards that you want to play to bid for this six. In this case, you can also pass. You were wishing you could pass on that first card. You're going to pass on the six because all of these are a waste of money. So you're just going to say, I play no cards. My hand isn't quite so bad, so I'm actually going to play the lowest card I can because I know that this will take it. I'll play the five. The five will take the six. The six goes into my score pile. The five goes into my discard pile. And that's the end of that round. Next round, I have to go first on this four. Now, I don't have anything as small as a four, and I know that you just passed on a six. You'll probably pass on this one too. So I'm going to pass. I'll play no cards. You'll pass and play no cards. And that means the round is over, but the four stays here. It gets another card added to it. It's a one. <laughs> Let's fast forward because we're not going to bid on that five points either. There's a seven. Okay, now we have 12 points in the middle. Now it's worth bidding. I'm going to make what looks like a pretty big bid. I'm going to play two cards. You can play as many cards as you want to make this bid, uh, including zero, including your whole hand. Um, you are suspicious, but... And, and any two card bid that you make, it's gonna be more than 12 points. So you're just gonna play that 10. You bid 10, I bid 12 on the 12, the sixes go to my discard pile, the 714 goes to my score pile. Uh, this 10 goes into your reserves. It's a card that you played but didn't pick up a bid, it's gonna go back into your hand. And I have to lead first on that eight. I'm gonna play one card on that eight. You're gonna do the same 
At a certain point, you don't want a big handful of big cards because it's going to turn into random cards from the deck. So it's actually worth it to you to just play a value for value. You pick up the eight, I save the seven. And let's talk about cleanup. You're going to get positive eight points for the eight that you picked up. You're going to lose eight points for the eight that you played to get it. And so these are going to turn into a zero when we actually score the game. So you can turn them into a zero right now. Instead of picking all that up, just throw it away. This is a shared discard pile. These are cards that are just out of the game for sure. You took that trick, so you've got to play first on this one. And I mean, you've just got this giant hand of giant cards. You're going to play another eight to pick that up. I'm going to play a 10 because it's all I have left. Uh, and so your eight will go to your reserve. This eight will go to my score pile. The 10 that I played will go to my discard pile. And that actually is a loss of two points for me. And since I have giant cards, I'm not even going to bid on that seven. I'm going to pass. I wish I had tiny cards in my hand. They're sitting here waiting to go back in my hand, but all I have right now is a pair of tens. So I pass on the seven. I have a suspicion that you're going to do the same because you've also got gigantic cards in your hand. So as we both pass, now we have two sevens out there. On the 14, I'm going to bid one card. You're pretty sure that that's a 10, but you're going to play your 10 as well. And we're going to see what happens in a tie. I bid 10, you bid 10. We're going to split those sevens. What does that actually mean? It means we get a net zero gain. We're going to get the same number of points from all of this. It actually means we can throw away all these cards. Let's just don't even count these later. Let's understand that they're worth zero right now. Let's throw them straight into the discard pile. So who bids first on this five? Because we just tied. It's going to be the person who bid first on the last round. Me. Do I want to pay 10 bucks for a five? No, I do not. Do you want to pay one of your big cards for a five? No, you do not. There's 12 points. I'll bid a single card. Uh, all you have left is nines. So you're going to bid one of those. What's the result here? The 10 picks up the 12 points of cards. These go in my score pile. The 10 goes in my discard pile. Your nine goes in your reserves. And my hand is empty. That's the point at which I pick up these reserves. And now you know that the cards in my hand are a four and a seven. So on that nine, I'll bid. I'll bid one card and see what you do. Um, you'll bid, just to keep me honest. I bid four and you bid nine. So you picked up a nine with a nine, and these cards can just go away. And this four that I just played, back into my reserve. There's a seven. I'm going to play this card for that seven. You're like, well, I don't want to throw away a nine for seven points. Uh, so you can either play that nine or hold on to it. You know that I'm playing a seven, and that's also a net gain of zero. So those can go to the discard pile. I won that last trick. The four is in my hand. I play this. It kind of means you have to play the nine to pick it up. So you got 10 points in your score pile. You discarded a nine and the four is back in my reserve. This is fairly typical. One card is just cycling back and forth into my hand until I actually play it and win something with it. Um, your hand is empty now, so you're picking up the eight, nine, ten. It's your bid on that four. Do you want to bid a giant card on that four? I mean, go ahead, but you're going to pass. I could take it for four, or I could just wait and play on that. Um, now you are going to be able to take that. You're going to play your smallest card. And whether I play this four or not is irrelevant, because it's not going to take the trick, and it's just going to jump back into my hand. So you got 14 points for your eight. That's good. And now on that 10, if you pass, you know I can take the 10 for four. So you're going to buy it for nine. Back over to me. On the two, you probably will pass. And I have to decide whether I want to buy that two for four or just, I mean, I can't buy anything that you don't want me to buy. I'm going to pass on it as well. Another card gets added to it, seven. You could buy the seven for 10 or you could let me buy it for four. I'm going to buy it for four. So four goes in my discard pile. The seven goes in here. And now it's time for you to burn out. You don't get to bid anymore. You have to throw this card away and get a replacement for it, whatever is the card, the next card on the deck. You got a nine for it, so that's pretty good, but it could have been anything. All right, let's talk about score. So all of the cards that I saved in my discard pile, those count against me. Those are negative points. All the cards that I picked up, those are positive points. So I can cancel that stuff out. All we really care about is what I have left. So there's five and five against a 10. There's eight and two against a 10. I've got 15 up and 11 down. That means I scored four points. And I'm just going to put this four in front of me so I can remember my score. Your score is positive for all of these, negative for all of these. So I'm seeing tens cancel, and there's a nines. 
Uh, I don't see much else I can cancel. Let's see. Uh, so 26 minus 24, you got a net score of two points. Let's try that again and see how we go. It is a lot of fiddling and a lot of math, but it's an interesting challenge to make your cards pay back, to buy as many points from the center as you can and track what the other player is holding so that you get the best value without giving them like easy pickings. So we're off to a simple start, eight cards for each player. And we're going to play for one card that's going to be a nine this time. That's a lot better than the two. We each get to bid, we have to bid exactly one card for that nine. Whoever offers the most is going to pick it up and they're going to lead the next trick. But we don't always want to pay a lot for the first card. In fact, how much you're willing to pay for that first card gives me a hint about your play style and the quality of your, of your current hand. It really does. I can start learning things about your hand by which cards you choose to play once we both sort of know what we're doing. So here's the bid for the nine. I bid a seven, you bid a six. That means I get the nine. The nine goes in my score pile, that's here. The seven goes in my discard pile, that's here. My discard pile is worth negative against me, that's why I put it like this, like a minus sign. My score pile is worth positive. That's why it's up and down like this. So that's plus nine. My score right now is two points. Your six did not pick anything up. It goes in reserve. It's waiting over here to jump back into your hand when your hand is empty. And because I took that trick, I will play the first card or cards on the next one. And because the next one is a two, I'm going to say that's worth nothing to me. I'm going to pass. Now you happen to have a one in your hand and you could actually get a net gain of one point here if you wanted to, but you're also going to pass on that. You figure you'll get a better opportunity later. Now the target is worth 12 points. And yeah, I'll play one card on that. Now you know that my one card could be no bigger than a 10. It's probably a 10 or something close. So if you actually want to pick up that 12 points, you have a couple of choices. You can play a 10 and see if we tie. You can play a high card again and see if we tie. You can play a low card or you can play nothing. And you sort of want to play a medium card if you don't want to waste 10 or 9 points on this 12. You're going to play a medium card on this. You're going to play an 8. I call that a medium card because there's so many 8s, 9s, and 10s in the deck. And that's just a communication to me to say, look, I'm not going to let you get that 12 for less than 8 points. You're happy to hold on to the 8. Let me spend 9 to catch 12. And let me lead first on the next card. I'm like, okay, well, you, you, keep, you continue to try to make a profit, so I might reduce the amount that I'm willing to pay to see if I can get away with paying less. Uh, let's see how this goes. I mean, sometimes what you play is just a function of the cards you have left. I played a 6 to get this 8, but you played a 7, so you're finally scoring some points. The 8 goes in your score pile, the 7 goes in your discard pile, the 6 goes in my reserves, and you're going to lead on the next trick. That's a 5. When you play a card on that trick, I have a pretty strong suspicion that it's a very low card. It wouldn't be worth it to throw away a big card to pick up that five. Um, but I'm going to use my four in what I think is a good situation for the four. You played a one. You would have loved to pick up that five for one point, but you couldn't. The one's going to go in your reserve. I'm going to get the five in my score pile. I'm going to discard the four, and it'll be my lead on this trick. For a nine, I'm willing to spend this. What do you play on that nine? You've got five, six, nine, and ten. How much are you willing to spend to pick up that nine or keep me from getting it? And this, again, is a function of the cards in your hand. You sort of don't want to pass. Even if you play a card you know is too low, you want to cycle your card so you can pick up the stuff that's waiting for you to pick it up, the stuff in your reserve. So you're going to play a six. Because you don't want to waste a nine on a nine, you feel like you can do better than that. I played an eight, so I score nine, I throw away eight, your six goes to reserve, and it's my lead again. On a four, I'm going to pass. Now, if you had a one, you would instantly play it, but your one is long gone. Do you want to play a five to pick up a four? Probably not. You're going to pass as well. On 13 points, what will I do? I can play multiple cards if I want to. If I really want 13 points, I can do it. I'm going to play one. Your best guess is that that is a 10. And so if you play a 10 as well, the net result is that we split it. If I'd played a 9 and you'd played a 10, you would have got those 13 points. Because we both played a 10, we split it, 
And that has the net result of us gaining zero. The whole bunch can just get thrown away. Now I was the lead on that last card. And so I get to lead again on this. Do I want to spend nine to pick up an eight? I kind of don't, but I also kind of don't want you to get it for cheap. Uh, I'm going to pass because I don't know what you have left. Oh, you do have a five there. So you're going to buy that eight for five. Eight goes in your score pile, five goes in your discard pile, and you're going to bid first on that nine. You will bid your nine. What do I want to do? I guess I'm going to bid the nine because all I have left is a nine and a ten, and that zeroes those cards out, and it's your lead again. On the ten. Now, this is an important part of the game. You're leading, and your reserve just jumped back into your hand. You, and I know that you have six, one, eight, six. So when you play one card to pick up that 10, I'm either playing this 10 to pick it up for a net gain of zero or letting you pick it up with whatever that was, which might have been your one, and letting you get it with a, for a net gain of nine. So I'm going to play my 10. I'll win the trick. Your one goes to your reserve. And because I'm picking up a 10 with a 10, that's a net zero. I'm just going to throw them both away. Now my hand is empty. I pick up the six. To play on that seven, I play my card. You know it's a six. You have a couple of options. You can pick up that seven for eight. You can pick it up for six. If you pick it up for six, I played a six. It all goes to the zero pile. And it's my lead again, but I'm out of cards. Oh, I'm out of cards, and that means you're going to burn your hand out. You've got one, six, eight. Um, you're going to get the six as part of the burnout. I forgot that we were there. So your 168 gets thrown away into your discard pile. The next three cards on the deck get thrown into your score pile. 10, 6, 5. That's a little bit of a gain, so that's good. Now let's take a look at the final scores. My score pile is positive points. And I keep my discard pile negative. Make, keep it to the side like this to remind me that these are the ones I'm subtracting. Uh, but I've got 28 points in the negative pile. Uh, here's 28 points in the positive pile. I can throw all of those away, and that leaves me with seven points. In your positives, you've got these. In your negatives, you've got these. Let's take them off a piece at a time. Here's an eight killing an eight. Here's a six killing a six. Here's a five canceling out a five. And then you've got plus 18 and minus eight. Well, that's eight canceling eight. You've got 10 points and I've got seven. You're the winner of that game of Burnout. That's Burnout. It's a game for the Pairs deck. There's lots of different versions of the Pairs deck and dozens of different games you can play with it. Uh, this is the Andrew Kolb Las Vegas deck, which I am very fond of. There's pictures of trees. There's pictures of goblins. There's all kinds of great art decks for Pairs. You can find all of these rules for free at Crab Fragment Labs. I'm James Ernest. Thanks for playing Burnout with me today, and I'll see you at the table.